thank you for your help. You need a hard hat on that ladder. No, oh, hold money? on to it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. No, you don't get money. Don't look at me like that. Hey folks, I'm Tim. Welcome back to the Big Barn Build in today's video. We're starting something which I never thought I'd hear myself say. We're gonna dig a swimming pool. Stick around, let's make a start. As all you long-term fans of the channel will know, we're converting this big old cow shed into our dream farmhouse home. And it's been a bit of a rocky road to get here. It's taken a whole load of planning applications, ups and downs, but we're finally at a point where we can start the build. But why is there a swimming pool now in the design? Well, we were trying to reduce the size of the ground floor of the house because it's a colossal space. We weren't allowed to make the building any smaller. Therefore, we tried to break up certain elements. One was a covered patio area, and also we've got like a separate annex to the building as a kind of guest bedroom area or future multi-generational living space. But we also had this two bay corner, which we thought we'd turn into some sort of games room type area outside of the main part of the house. In actual fact, uh, at the time putting our designs together, the idea was floated amongst our um, architect and consultant that if we ever considered a swimming pool, now would be the time to put it on there. And actually, even if we didn't, it might give the council something to, to remove from our design. It was a bit of a bargaining chip. So we, we, we thought that they would remove it from our design or at least have an issue with it. They never mentioned it. So we ended up with this bizarre situation where we've got an approved indoor swimming pool, which is definitely not in our budget. But if it is ever gonna happen, which we kind of like the idea of, it makes sense to do some of it now. Right, so I know it probably looked from the time lapse I started digging, but I haven't actually started digging. I'm just trying to scrape off all of the stone because I can use that and I don't want it to mix in with the potentially the soil that we're gonna be digging out. Well, you can see all of this, good 200 mil plus of type one sort of stone to dust. And because the barn was built on slightly sloped ground, this end, the footings are lower and the backfill is uh, being put in to give us a flattish floor. But I can't believe what they've backfilled it with. I thought it would be, you know, rubble, bricks, whatever they put, get their hands on to fill the void uh, or to bring the level up. But actually, it's just pure type one. Getting on for, well, over half a metre. And as you can see, it's just all stone to dust. Which is good because it's pretty much virgin stone we can use for other sub bases or building up areas and levels outside, inside, anywhere we need to. Just gotta put it somewhere now. And then we can switch buckets and actually start digging once we hit soil. I think we're ready to dig. The digger bucket is on, but we have hit soil here. So I think they might have just dug deeper around the outside of the building, and that's why the backfill is over there. So although that wall will be rebuilt at some point, I'm gonna use it as our datum to work from because we know the distance that we need to leave. Okay, not yet. So take this, yeah, take the silver bit, and you need to go over to the long green line I've sprayed on the floor. I'm too, but the second one. one, the bigger one. Okay, tell me when you get there. Onto it. Yeah, just above it. You don't need to touch it, it's a bit wet, the paint. There. Yeah, so hold it just above it. That's about right, yeah? Which number? Say there, that's right. You, I'll, I'll do the numbering. You no, just I hold know it. Which number it is. Okay, what number is it? It is uh, four closer to me. Four closer, okay, good. You hold it there, hold it nice and tight. Screen form, hold it above that one. Tell me when you get there. There. You good? A four again. You four again, yeah. And hold it above that green one over there. Okay. 
You don't need to stand above it, you could stand below it, can you? Jump down a bit. And then and then reach over. Just hop yeah. Pull it over face the wall, turn around so you're facing the wall. And and pull the pull the tape measure until it's over the top of the green. Pull, 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 pull. You don't need to stand up there, you just face the wall. Now hold this. There. Can you see? Can you see it's in line now? Okay, hold it there. Don't move. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter about the number. Are you holding it? Yeah. Okay. Hold it tight. No, above the above the green. Yeah? Yeah. You tell me when you're there, are you above it? Yeah. Definitely? Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Go over there. It's a sheep spray. No, 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 don't do that. Hey, it comes out of that bit. Mm. I'll hold the can. You... Let's do a friend. That's it. Whoop. Oh, what are you going to do? Like are that. you going to do a rough? Yeah. Okay. I want to. Yeah, hang on. Why is there something inside? Well, it's just to keep the paint mixed up. Careful. All right, don't breathe it in either. No, no, you're too close, too close. I'll hold the can and then you can just push. Spray, spray. Oh! That was a 9-9. Nine well, that's pretty close. Yeah, push. Is that push. good? Yep. Oh, sorry. All right, don't tell oh. it. Don't touch it. Ah. Careful, you're going to roll. There you go. Oi. Is that good? Don't tell the others, I'm not graffitiing everyone's name on there. Come on, you're like a rock copper penguin. Can I? Hold it tight, really tight. I knew you were gonna let go of it. Hold it tight, otherwise we'll be here all night. That is actually how big the swimming pool is. It's quite big. Thank you for your help. You need a hard hat on that ladder. No, oh, hold money? on to it, hold on to it. Hold on to it. No, you don't get money. Don't look at me like that. I didn't get any money. Okay. Oh, you will, I will think about how much you've earned for holding my tape measure, then I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Don't give for this. All day, don't give puppy I'm dog eyes to the camera. You. I'm gonna help you for all day. All day, every long. day. Okay. You go back inside because I've got to dig this hole. Yeah. <laughs> all right. If we're, if the accuracy is off, don't blame me. Let's get a hole in the ground. I'm gonna start that end. I'm on my own, even though every single swimming pool dig video I can find on YouTube has a team of about six people, um, I think we'll be all right. I'm just going to dig, I'm going to have to pile it up behind me and then change buckets and then bring the dumper in, jump into the other seats, blah, blah, blah. But I think let's just get a dig going. Let's see if we can get an accurate start to the build and um, go from there. I have tried to get a staff for my uh, laser level, so that should be it tomorrow. But as you can see, we still need to go down a good bit and that's gonna be a problem because I think I've run out of reach on my arm of the digger, unless I can reach it from that central point. Either way, I'm hoping to at least get the first, maybe the first meter of the hole level, flat and at the right depth and then I'll deal with the spoil before I get any further. Show you how I'm getting on. Uh, I did just get on and do another solid two hours. I'm obviously one man band here, so I'm 
digging into the dumper, dumper out. I've done about 25 of those, which is, you know, it's probably 100 tonnes plus of soil already, and we're half depth. But we are down to sand, and uh, I've now got my ramp ready. So let me give you a, a high shot first. Joe just came out and measured up. Uh, um, pretty, pretty bang on. I'm t I could shave off a little bit up here, but because it's an oversized hole for uh, an internal, like a pool, the pool will be smaller than the hole. Uh, we've got a bit of leeway, but be good to get it as tight as I can. So that is the depth we want. Obviously there's a bit of um, soil that's fallen in, but that ledge is sand all the way. So I've stopped as soon as, I, as, soon as I've hit clean sand. And once I've scraped off these bits of rubble, that, uh, bits of soil that have fallen in, we should end up with this kind of, I guess it's going to be just under a metre layer of pure sand. I've also built myself a ramp to get down. Uh, I can certainly get down safely because I can use the arm to lower myself. It's just making sure I can push myself back out, but I should be okay. I'll have to dig the clean sand up to a pile up here then i'll go up later on get that into the dumper uh, there's no harm in me keeping it until i've um, checked with building control and structural engineer uh, and anyone else who might need to know we've got loads of sand quarries around here and they must be digging up the same stuff yes building sand proper brick sand is obviously going to be washed through but the properties that you're using it for to stop sub base puncturing a dpm is it doesn't need to be washed for that. So we might be able to quarry our own aggregates, which is quite cool. I, w I won't be using it for the brickwork, <laughs> but I mean, you could, I don't know how you wash them. All right, let's, let's do this. We've gone a bit deep in one corner, but I decided to take the digger all the way down. This this bit, I mean, it's steep. As long as you've got the bucket down, it, it, it's safe. Belt on, you know, and take it steady. But I've actually gone over that ledge and created a ramp, but I've created the ramp in sand. So there's a good chance I'm gonna to struggle to get back up onto my ramp. Well, 1.7 meters is my mark on my spirit level. There's no need for any lasers or anything like that at this point because I'll be putting some material back in the bottom here um, before any insulation or concrete go in. So let's just see. Now I'm obviously using this big bucket, which is good for the material moving and it's fine for all this sand. But as soon as you get to any of the harder sand, such as here, it's, it's not as good at biting into the wall. Um, However, this is all a bit rough up there now, but I think we're okay at depth. So that is okay. I can reach all that from the top bank. I think my next challenge is gonna to be to get the digger back up, back up onto that ramp. And then I should be able to get this material up onto there, hopefully get it high enough. using the grading level to kind of pull that out from where we've measured because it's all sand it's what you know easy to move so we're doing a great job here 
I say so myself. Eden's now just checking the last of the levels and she's starting to even it out. She's also being the archaeologist and working out what bones we've just dug up. Pretty sure it's some sort of deer or sheep. Um, but we're now at a point where I'm back up at ground level and we're just doing the last metre. Job now is to work out uh, the bits I'm digging up now, are they soil? Have they got any soil contaminants in them? Because if they have, they're going on this side, which is sub base for the garden. Um, whereas all the sand, the true sand, can go over the other side. Let's see what we've done. Eden thinks she might be stuck down there. She's thrown herself a pair of set of steps. Okay, so we definitely need to tidy up this end. I'm not as, not as young as I used to be. Go down that way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is pretty good. Our sharp, magic sharpie mark. You kind of imagine where the floor level is, but it's at least there. Let's just see if we can tidy up the bottom. Leave us up. Is that the dog digging in the field? What a day. Uh, I wasn't expecting to dig a swimming pool this week. Of all the things we needed to do, it was probably low on the priority list, but I'm glad we did it. Uh, we're almost there. This is basically the height we've worked out. So we're about right all the way along. This end is smooth, you can see behind me. So we are, at least half of it is pretty much prepped, ready for starting the base in the future. This end, I can reach the last meter or so with the reach of the digger. There's just a little bit of a hump here. For some reason it looks worse than it is. I don't think it's too far off. Maybe we've got a few low spots, that's what it is. So although it looks like we're creating a shallow end, it won't be, it will be, it's going to be a level bottom. We should be good to finish off that end. Last job of the day is to get some mesh up. I've got some scaffolding mesh for now, but I think I'll get some Harris fencing this week just to cordon off this whole area of the barn. All right, how are we going to get out of here? I don't want to go. What you didn't know is your father is a parkour expert. <laughs> now, now who's the joker? Now who's the joker? No, well, actually, I don't want to. Go on, walk. Daddy, I don't want to. And there we have it. After a couple of days of digging, we have ourselves a very large hole, quite inconveniently, in the middle of the barn. Um, let me give you a little bit of an update and show you how things stand and how they probably will be for a little bit of time now. So as you can see, the pit is pretty much complete. There's a little bit down this end, which I, I can still reach. Um, and I'm going to leave that until I actually get on this properly, ready for the concrete in the bottom. So a few things on the actual swimming pool itself. It sounds really elaborate and it is, and too elaborate for us because there's no budget, no funds for it to be part of the initial house build. So what we've decided to do is get to the point where the groundworks are done and we've got a blank shell that we can jump on in a future project in years to come. Before that happens, we'll probably leave it boarded over, maybe get some scaffolding put up inside or something to make it nice and secure. Um, there are walls, obviously, the external wall of the house is actually between the house and the pool. That's for you know moisture and the environmental reasons of keeping that space separate from the air within the house. It's all under one roof and it's essentially it is an indoor pool. But we decided to make our thermal, our, our external wall here. Of course, the wall around the swimming pool also has to be insulated because of the nature of it being the same building. But it makes sense to do that. We've got a clean cut from indoor habitable space to that space, which won't be heated for a, a good few years probably. And the same again over on the patio on the other side. So we haven't done a massive amount of research into swimming pools. I, I know the basics and I know what type of thing we want, which is fairly 
average size. It's not an Olympic swimming pool, but it, it's also big enough to use as a swimming pool rather than just an exercise pool. It's going to be level along the bottom, deep enough for kids to jump in, but no, no Tom Daly. You know, we don't need it to be really deep. We don't need it to be really complicated by having deep and shallow. I think from people I've spoken to that have got pools, a, a level pool is almost more usable as far as if you're playing a game in there. As long as it's deep enough to swim in, if you've got a group of you, you're all the same. Um, so that's what we're going to go for, I think. As far as the actual construction of the pool, we are, I don't know if I've mentioned it in the videos before, but I used to do some photography for a company who did really high-end pool installs. They use these one-piece, um, nice, really nice one-piece pools. All the plumbing's there, the insulation's there. Um, that are dropped in, you backfill, you're almost done, all the, the cover and everything's integrated. Having seen the price of them um, and knowing that we like to do stuff ourselves, I'm kind of coming away from the idea of that, especially because access to get it in there, the window for that access closes in about a month or two and we're not gonna have the money to do it at that point. So if we do want to do a pool, we'll do this sort of work now. We're probably gonna get the retaining walls, the insulation and the slab section done but not the plumbing or, or, you know, the first fix that we have to get to, we can put in, but the actual everything else in the plant room and the ventilation. So one thing I hadn't taken into account is the main cost of a pool, an indoor pool, is kind of the plant room, but also the ventilation, what deals with the pool environment. Because it's indoor, the humidity, you have to have all sorts of ducted air flows, uh, any glazing has to have air being blown over it and this sort of thing. So we've actually reduced glazing in this building, uh, in this room, because of that, because it simplifies things. And that we're now at a point where we may be able to get away with not needing a full ducted airflow system in there. It might be able to be a wall-mounted system. Um, but either way, the main expense is, is all that tech that comes with it. So I think what we're going to do is just do get our structural engineer is working on the actual structure of it, the retaining walls, the backfill, the insulation. That could be in hollow block, it could be in ICF. I kind of like the idea of doing some ICF. We're not going to use it on the main build, but it could work quite well. And I've seen a lot of people using them for swimming pools. So if anyone's got any information um, or tips, let me know. Running costs on an indoor pool, a running costs on any pool are, uh, are high, but equally we've managed to put enough solar on here that's generating more than we actually can consume even in this size building even after heating the the house so i, I think that's going to help obviously there's the dosing and all that sort of stuff that comes with the pool and the servicing but that's a decision for us to make in the future when we might be able to afford it for now we're just going to have a big hole in the ground and it might end up being a foam pit because that seems to be the cheaper option Lastly, I'm going to mention it now because uh, we put a photo up of the kids stood in there with their spades as if they dug the hole. Um, and a, f a couple of people, just a couple of people, didn't see the lighthearted side of it and said that, you know, we're endanger endangering lives. Uh, rest assured, we're not stupid and I'm not going to let my kids play around in a big excavated hole like that. Um, it's stable ground. I made the decision that, yes, it's okay for them to go down in there and stand in the bottom of a big hole because that's exciting for kids and they're the sort of memories that are fun to make but at the end of the day we're also being responsible parents they're not allowed in this building when we're not here and of course now there is fencing up it's clear that nobody goes in there whether you're a sheep you're a goat you're a kid or an adult so there you go rest assured it is what it is i'm not going to shore up the sides a few people said that after that photo as well it, this is going to be done within weeks and if a bit of it collapses, I dig it out again. Um, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. It's nice untouched ground that we've hit after that little bit of backfill in the corner where that type one was. The rest of it was pretty much virgin ground. Any thoughts on my big hole in the barn, uh, let me know and, and we will make plans accordingly. But if I can get a concrete truck in and get a lot of that done now, I mean, we're never going to have the opportunity to do that. I can get the concrete is going to be able to come in. There's no need for pumping unless we did ICF. No need for a pump for anything because a concrete truck can get to every part of the footings all the way around the outside. And then as we work back out, get in for slab sections and it'll all be good, I hope. Anyway, 
help is on the horizon. Tom's going to start with me in, I think, two weeks, um, and then we'll be motoring. At the moment, it's a lot of back and forwards for structural engineer, working out what steel work we're putting in for the mezzanine, and we're talking as well with the roofers, because getting the Velux into a box profile, we've now finally sorted, we've found an expert solution for that, um, and a different company who deals with penetrations, and they're going to come and do that as a separate entity in the future. So we're pretty much ready to get this roof swapped out, which is going to be exciting. It's one of those things that I can actually stand behind a camera and film the experts doing, because by the time they got, well, the asbestos going off, not going to get involved there. Um, dealing with the beams, obviously the steel work and the painting, that's what I'll be on, but the actual new roof going on, 12 and a half metre long sheets uh, on a windy day. Uh, I'm going to leave it to some expert with a telehandler or a crane and then just watch from afar. And then we basically end up with a lovely new roof, insulated and ready to start on the walls. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Go and enjoy the rest of my Sunday afternoon. And yes, if you're watching this on a Sunday evening, I am filming this an hour before it goes up online and that's just how it is. Which reminds me, exciting news, tomorrow morning, Carl the Crusher is arriving and we've got we've now got a pile probably about two-thirds the size of this maybe half the size of this down on the south end of the barn we're starting down there then coming around this uh, this end and hopefully by the end of tuesday this will be smaller and a more evenly sized uh, aggregate piled up there ready for all sorts of projects but i am looking forward to it with some trepidation because i don't know how noisy it's going to be how dusty it's going to be and how much of the town are going to hear us but anyway we'll leave it there thanks for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time